So I know this is going to sound weird, but for anybody who has a cozy wall furnace that's been having issues like that are all over the forums, like I'm also having, which is you take your thermostat, you trip it, basically what I mean by that is you call for heat, and nothing happens, but yet the pilot light is strong, it's lit, it's blue, it's healthy. Uh, the burners don't start. So basically you call for heat on your thermostat, nothing happens on your heater, your pilot light is lit, but your burners won't light. I just got off the phone with a cozy tech. He was very, very helpful. Um, and unlike other cozy techs, which said replace the gas valve, which I, I did two days ago, and the problem still persist, the only difference that that made was no longer... Uh, I'm sorry, actually, no. I replaced the gas valve two days ago. The problem stayed the same. I replaced the thermostat yesterday. The problem stayed the same by about 70%. And what I mean by that is I used to be able to knock right there when this problem would happen and the burners would fire up and I'd get heat. Um, nothing else would make this thing work really. So I'd, tur I'd, I'd turn on the thermostat, call for heat, pilot lights lit, furnace is not firing up that is to say burners are not firing up I would take the back of a screwdriver tap on this just like that maybe a little bit harder and the burners would fire right up problem with that is um, it, it had to be a loose connection with wiring and, and still probably is and that's what I'm getting to here because problem with that is the thermostat it's not like I would bang on that and then the problems would would go away for a month or even a week or even a full day I would just get heat for that moment. Uh, the heater would bring the house up to the temperature that it was set on, the thermostat was set on, and then it would kick off, and then whatever you want to say. An hour would pass, I'd wake up freezing cold again, I'd have to come out to my living room, tap on the furnace again, light it back up. So it was basically like not having a thermostat that could turn on. The thermostat could tell when the, the room was up to temperature and kick the, the, the furnace off which obviously is, is the safer of the two. You want the furnace to be able to shut down, um, but it would not realize that the temperature in the house, once it shut down, would drop down by, you know, whatever, a degree, three degrees, five degrees, 10 degrees, then I'd wake up. You know, the thermostat never kicked the darn thing on, so I'd have to hit it again, fire the burners back up, and we were good to go. Now, the, the, the guy on the phone made a very interesting, helped me come to a very interesting uh, res realization here. I replace the thermostat and all of a sudden the knocking goes away. So being that I replace the thermostat and the knocking goes away, perhaps I tightened up on a connection that now the knocking does not fix. The other thing is I just cut my wire down to about five feet because I've had it. Uh, millivolt systems, if, if no one's told you this yet, I've come to find through the forums and talking to different HVAC guys who are kind enough to not take my money for problems like this, even though I'm getting to the point where I'd pay anything to have this thing fixed, um, have said to me, millivolt systems are extremely, extremely touchy. Do not underestimate how touchy a millivolt system is. So I cut my wire down, as you can see, to next to nothing. It comes out of the heater, out of the wall, and it's right there. We're talking maybe four feet, maybe. Um, but length of wire can make millivolt uh, systems uh, become weaker through the length of the wire. So it's my understanding that you really don't want to have that long of wire, even though you can get up to 20 feet. And they do suggest that your thermostat be in the same room, five feet off the ground, six feet away from the unit. These are all things that Cozy have told me. The, the thermostat being that far away is creating issues, I think, with, with the millivolts traveling through the wire and really um, not getting to the, um, the thermocouple and, and opening uh, the furnace up to start. It, it's just not strong enough, so I cut it down. But he brought up a good point, and I wanted to show you guys this because this is something that I was ignoring. He said, everyone always looks down at the furnace, make sure you look up. And when you look up, there are safety wires, which I'm about to check, uh, and I'll probably make another video about that after this one. There are safety wires up there. And he said, 
I can almost guarantee you it doesn't surprise me at all that you replace the gas valve and the problem doesn't get fixed. It doesn't surprise me at all that you're on your fourth thermostat. And it doesn't surprise me at all that when you take your wires off the thermostat and hold them together, that the, the furnace fires right up. But yet when you put the thermostat wires on the thermostat, sometimes it seems like it's fixed. And then within an hour, it's not fixed. So when I jump the thermostat, it starts right up. When I take the two wires off the thermostat and hold them together, this thing will fire right up. Um, but when I put them on the thermostat, there there seems to be an issue. And it's been four thermostats, so it's, I know it's not just like, replace your thermostat. I've replaced it four times. But he said, you want to check your blue wires up top. So take the cover off, slide the blue wires off of the terminals, and then slide them back on. And he said, also, do yourself a favor and get some, um, some like, not wire cutters, whatever these would be called, like I guess very skinny needle nose pliers, and squeeze the terminals up top. Now I'm showing you one on the bottom just because I'm not up top yet, but this is a terminal and he said, you know, these things fit on, let me just see where my camera is here, they fit on just like that, they just slide on. They come off pretty easily, so make sure that you squeeze these terminals with needle nose pliers and make sure that they're really on there, creating a good connection, because that's the other thing he said is that with a millivolt system, they are very touchy, and if you do not have a good connection, you, and he really stressed a good connection, you're really, um, you're doing things like I did, which is replacing gas valves when all you probably needed to do is crimp down on a connection like that. Now, the other thing to, to check while you're in here is the piece of blue wire that ties together with your white wire with a wire nut as per the cozy instruction manual. I just cut, let me see if I can find it now, it doesn't really matter, but basically I just cut a fresh piece of this wire, okay? Now, in taking the sheath off of this about five minutes ago, I noticed, and I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up, but there's a ton of sheath residue, bluish white sheath residue on this wire still. I am not an electrician. I am not certified HVAC. You probably shouldn't listen to me, but I will say this. That sheath was very hard to cut off. It was very um, gooey, for lack of a better way of putting it. And I'll bet you, being that that sheath was not a hard plastic that just slid right off with my wire cutters, I'll bet you that that residue on this wire creates a bad connection when you twist these together with a wire nut. So how am I going to clean that? I don't know. I guess with the wire cutters, just kind of scrape at it like a, a razor would scrape all the sheath off. Maybe I'll untwist this so it gets real wispy and then intertwine those wisps around this metal connection, which I'm about to cut off and get a new connection on there as well on the white wire and then rewire nut that. I'm going to crimp down on this, make sure that it's connected very good right there. And I'm going to crimp down on the top ones. I'm going to take them off of their terminals, put them back on, and crimp down on those as well. He said, I almost bet you that that's the problem. A lot of people don't think about that. They're running around thinking they need to replace their thermocouple, their gas valve, get a new thermostat. And uh, a lot of times it's just millivolt systems are very, very, very touchy, um, unfortunately for us. And I just found on the floor, I don't know if you can see this, but the sheath that I took off you can see that it it did not come off easily at all it stretched a lot it's a whitish blue because there was a lot of stretching it did not break off easily and uh all the more reason like i said it left a residue on this wire that needs to be cleaned better so for all you out there that are cold you feel like you're at the end of your rope with a a, a wall furnace and you've done the basic things like replace multiple thermostats, you've cut your thermostat wire so that the millivolts aren't traveling as far, you've even gone as far as to replace your own gas valve, um, of course with soapy water always on hand. Um, you know, you can see with a basic multimeter, I got this one at O'Reilly Auto Parts, um, the DC2000M setting, 
gives me an, a great read on the um, on the thermocouple when I hold the two. Basically, I turn that on on the DC 2000 setting. I hold my red terminal to red. I hold my black terminal to white. And I got a reading of like 500. So he said, well, that's not your thermocouple then. You, you know, you know your thermocouple is good if you're getting a reading of about 500. And let me be clear about that too, in case you don't know what I just did. The furnace is completely off right now. There's no pilot light. So what I just showed you, you need to do with the pilot light on. The furnace needs to be on. So turn this to pilot, push it in, take your lighter, light your pilot, hold it in so that it can warm up the thermocouple, turn it the, the furnace to on. The burners should not be on. The, the furnace should not be producing heat, okay? So your thermostat realistically could be down on like 40 degrees, just the pilot needs to be on. You test your thermocouple like I just showed you with your multimeter on 2000M, your red touching the screw on the red terminal, your black terminal touching the screw on the white terminal, and you should get a pretty healthy reading like I did of like 500 uh, or more. If it's real low, then you know you have a bad thermocouple, apparently. Getting a working education in, in uh, wall furnace uh, heaters after buying this thing. So I think I made another video where I opened up the air valve here. Basically, you just undo this screw and open this up. That didn't change the flames at all. Uh, in the manual, it says that that'll change the flames. That wasn't the case with me. So I'm going to see now if cleaning this wire, cutting this old piece off that's from last year, getting a new piece and cutting the sheath off, really twisting these, these guys together, and then getting the wire not to twist them and hold them good getting this connection stronger by crimping down on it and getting it to go into there a lot tighter. And then same thing up at the top, taking the blue wires off, crimping them a little with, with some needle nose pliers, putting them back on. Hopefully that solid connection should give this thing the electricity uh, retention, for lack of a better way of putting it, that it needs to, to function properly. So hopefully that works. We'll see. See you in the next video.